Hey guys, as y'all know by now, I got a greenhouse working on another one. And um, it's something I enjoy doing, totally different way of growing. This time of year, most people, the gardens are dying down. And they're just uh, pretty much putting everything up, getting ready for the cold weather. And they break it all back out sometime uh, early spring. And for me, it's just the time to switch modes and bring everything from outside to inside and keep right on going. So what I'm going to do right now is go over a couple of things that I did with the first greenhouse and some of the way I had it set up, some changes I've made, and the thought process that led me to the second one and what actually what the end goal that I'm trying to achieve. What I'm going to do is what we call down here S-P-L-A-I-N-I-N-G if you can read my right we're going to do some splaining. Alright what I'm going to start out with is just an overview of what I have right now which is a 40 by 18 uh, made out of 3 quarter inch EMT which is uh, electrical metallic tubing I wouldn't recommend anybody make it out of 3 quarter I'd step it up to at least inch or uh, preferably inch and a quarter but that's what I have. Um, what I had last year, if you're looking at it from the top, I had my stove situated right here with the pipe that came up, went out, and then back up like that. And what happened was, in trying to heat and having a stove inside the greenhouse like that, I lost use of all of this space right here. Now I had wood stacked up over here and then sometimes over here, and I also had wood around the stove trying to dry it out and so what I decided to do this year I had to get this somewhere down here one of the problems that I was having last winter this is configured east and west and in the winter time either from the northwest or the southwest I got wind coming like this and it's cold it was coming in all the cracks on the end down there and pushing against the stove. I had a little fan blowing air this way and Mother Nature she's just pushing this way and uh, sometimes I didn't win that battle. It, was, it wasn't easy. I ended up after I got the stove uh, situated right where it was pretty efficient where I could generate a lot of BTUs out of it that I could heat it you know pretty much regardless but it wasn't easy at the start. So for this year what I had to do was get this stove down to that end over there and I knew I didn't want it sitting right here and losing all the space like I did on this end. So what I did was come down here and build me a four foot extension. Uh, as you recall on each end I got two windows, two windows and I got a door in the middle. Same thing down here I now have a window, a window and I've got window and doors all the way on the uh, four foot extension and so I put my stove right in there. I've got my stack going straight up and I've got a piece of cement board right here kind of acting as a heat shield to keep the heat directly off the plants that are closest by and so now I've got my stove set up down here and I'm not taking up much room in the greenhouse, maybe just a little bit right there. So this uh, extra four foot has, is going to work out pretty good. So another thing that I had going on uh, was the fact that I was trying to grow some of just about everything in here. I was growing tomatoes, peppers, squash, cucumbers, all warm weather crops at the same time that I was growing cabbage, lettuce, carrots, onions, all cool weather crops or C-O-L-E cold crops. It's a D with an E not a D. C-O-L-E is cold crops and overnight they'll do just fine at uh, 40, 45 degrees not a problem at all with them. The warm weather crops uh, tomatoes at 40, 45 degrees uh, they're going to get pretty upset. So what I was ended up doing I was had all the warm weather stuff on this side and I had some cool weather stuff over here and I was heating the whole structure when really I only need to heat half of it so to keep from doing that same thing again what I've done for right now is I've just got warm weather stuff in here and 
to get to a situation where I can grow just about anything at any time, what I'm doing is this. This is the next greenhouse. This is the 18 by 40. My little four foot right here. And this is a 21 by 68. And what I'm going to do is once this first greenhouse is finished up sometime uh, late November, middle December, somewhere, at least by Christmas, I ought to be through with everything in here. I can take the peppers out and move them over here. But what I want to do is be situated where I can start growing all the warm weather crops in here. This one, it has a much higher roof. I'm going to have a lot more uh, vertical space to grow the tomatoes and cucumbers up. And plenty of room for just about every other warm weather crop in there too that I want to do. And we'll take this one, and this one will be for uh, cold crops. So I'm going to heat this one, and this four foot section right here will be how I get heat from here to here. What I do is uh, make me a little door right here, and put a fan in it, hang the fan up at the top, leave the bottom open so the warm air comes in here, and the cold air will come back and cycle down to this position over here. The other thing about this one is my stove is going to be way down here on that end. Now, it's going to work out pretty good, I think, again, because that's the west side over there, and the wind is going to be coming this way, so anything that comes in, which shouldn't be a lot, I'm going to try to make it uh, pretty t uh, airtight on this end, but anything that coming in is going to be pushing the cold air this way. The other thing about this greenhouse here is the fact that it's on an incline like so. I've got 11 foot on this end and 12 and a half on that end. So that will give me a 18 inch drop from uh, one end to the other. So if you take an 18 and a uh, 68 foot make a right angle you can figure out this hypotenuse right here and then determine what degree uh, you got in there. And uh, from talking to a Misty and Mountain Man several months ago we were talking about greenhouses and heating them they had read that uh, if you had, I think, either a five, 5 degree or 5% 5 slope uh, going this way, that you could put your stove down here, naturally the heat would come up, do this number, and all the cold air would come back right to the stove and you would never have to use a uh, fan, really. I'll probably, I'll have fans in there anyway to keep it all stirred up and mixed in, but that's another advantage for me to having a stove down here and another consideration for leaving the, uh, the ground on an incline as opposed to trying to grade it all off and having it nice and flat. I did consider making a step down and going like that, but I think I'm just going to keep it like so. So now that you see kind of what my thought process is, I want this, this side over here 60 to 65 and this 40 to 45. And uh, that should work out pretty good. I think with the stove, uh, based on the heat output that I had last year, making it even more efficient, that, and uh, putting a second layer of uh, plastic on the greenhouse with the blowers and stuff, uh, maintaining 60-65 in here would be, should be a piece of cake. And I should have plenty extra when I need to to dump into this side to keep this uh, above freezing. Uh, 40 degrees, cabbage, carrots, all that kind of stuff they'll do just fine. So let me show you, uh, you see on a drawing board kind of what I'm what I'm getting to. Uh, let me show you uh, what I have right now. Okay this is the view that was uh, shown in the last video from this uh, end of the greenhouse. Uh, what I have done is put some cages around those determinants going down the sidewall, line my peppers up down on the other end, uh, got rid of a few more cucumbers that had already reached the top and the, uh, they just weren't very healthy, started some more, and put some more of the uh, tomatoes down this side in the cages. And as you can see, there's a lot of bl uh, blooms on these things. Everything is looking pretty good. Got no complaints at all. Plenty of tomatoes coming on down in there everything looking real good so what I'm gonna do is turn this thing around and show y'all what's behind me alright this is the view from the other end but from down here you can see the stove situated down there now 
and you can see where I cut the two posts out and put me a 2x8 header in there. I probably could have uh, gotten away with a 2x6 and that would have been fine. I've got my stove set up in here and what I did is just put a piece of uh, concrete board up here or cement board up. That should cut down on the heat coming so close to these plants right here. And I like that stove configuration a lot better because I've got a straight pipe going up. I don't have that long, uh, on a 10, 12 foot section going um, horizontal for the heat to be dissipating in and then uh, turning going straight up and end up with a lot of creosote in there. What I did right here, it just put me a piece of OSB up. You'll see what it looks like on the outside. And I just uh, had a scrap 2x12 right here that I put in front of this window just to uh, make me a little wood rack. And same thing over here on this side. We're a little bit close, so I just put up a piece of concrete board, cement board. That'll work just fine. Now going on outside. Now you can see what it looks from the outside. What I had done, instead of going and closing this in, you know, with wood or something, what I did is just put plastic on this. And that's the concrete uh, cement board that was on the inside. And I've got a nice straight stack going up there right now. I wasn't happy about having to put the uh, stack on this end and having the smoke going across the top of the greenhouse, but I think uh, with the height that I have there, I should be okay. And right here, this door, eventually once the greenhouse is the next one is completed, uh, this will be the door that I have a fan up at the top and then the open at the bottom. And when I need to get air into here to maintain 40, 45 degrees, I can just turn this fan on and uh, let it run like that. Same thing on this side. I just uh, put plastic up with my uh, aluminum channel and the wiggle wire. We'll talk about that next time. And that's going to work out just fine. As far as how the new greenhouse is coming, it's getting there slowly but surely. It takes a little while doing this thing by yourself and uh, having to do a lot of other stuff too. I've got six more hoops to, uh, to put up and then I'll be ready to start on uh, the boards and stuff on the sidewalls and uh, start building the ends. At 68 foot I'm going to have more than enough room to grow just about anything that I want in here and the goal eventually is to be able to keep both of these going year round which means I'm going to have to come up with a way to cool these things. Uh, shade cloth will go a long way toward that and some other things like uh, subterranean cooling uh, I may incorporate into the first one to try to be able to get it down to you know 80 85 something like that in the summertime well that's that's a little bit farther off anyways that's what i'm looking like right now uh i'm gonna go ahead and finish out these tomatoes some more cucumbers and some squash and this one take it up to about christmas and i should be done with the next greenhouse and at that time i go ahead and start tomatoes and all the warm weather stuff in that one and this what i do is clean all this stuff out uh pull the plastic up and maybe uh, do some in-ground planting, but probably put beds in here for uh, lettuce, cabbage, uh, onions, carrots, all of that cool weather stuff, and take it uh, in that direction. So I'll have 40, 45 degrees in here, and on the other side, I want it, you know, at least 60 degrees in there in the winter time. Hope that helped. I uh, hope that explained a lot about what I'm doing. And uh, we'll get into the construction aspect of it and some uh, possible options for you guys if y'all want to start building one in the next uh, video. So I appreciate you watching and all the support and uh, we'll see you next time.